Hello everyone, welcome to the Geoecologist and as promised, I am here to start Geography of India series and this is our first video in this series where we start the Himalayan formation and understanding of the Himalayan orogeny. So if you have already watched the video in Geomorphology, I am sure you will love this video because this is about the formation of our Himalaya. So from here in physical geography, we start the India physical portion where in this video, by the end, you will be able to learn the formation of Himalaya and also the geological understanding of the formation of Himalaya. So watch the video till the end. And if you have not already subscribed, please do subscribe our channel and please do join us to support us. And also please do share these videos with others as well. So let's start with the picture of Himalaya itself and one of the very important and interesting places that is there on your screen here. Do you know which of these peaks is known by which name? If you know this, please comment in the box. And this is very famous in Himachal Pradesh, especially in Chamba district. So if you know this, do comment in the box. Now coming to our topic of Indian Himalaya and its formation. First thing that I already told you in the beginning lecture was that understand geological time scale. So let's have a recap of geological time scale where Himalayan formation will be dealt with. So if you see, this is Cenozoic era. And under Cenozoic era, you have tertiary and quaternary periods. And here, the beginning is tertiary. So Himalayan formation starts in tertiary period where you have these epochs. So if you see here, these epochs, Paleocene, Eocene, Oligocene, Miocene, Pliocene. This is the main time period of the whole Himalayan formation. So starting from 65 million years ago till present. Right. So this is the time period that you should always know where you'll see many times Eocene written, Miocene written. Right. And this is the time period that is Pleistocene, roughly 2.5 million years where we say that humans came to Earth. So Pleistocene is known by Ice Age and humans and Holocene by the modern humans. So this is the basic. And if you have not watched the video on geological time scale, the details I have already covered. Please go there and watch it again. Now coming to the evolution of Himalaya. So let's understand it through the geological time scale lens. So here, if you observe the geography of Gondwana land, and this is time period 220 million years ago, which is called Triassic. So in the Mesozoic era, Triassic is the earliest one where you see this is 220 million years ago. So what is happening? Gondwana is breaking away. Now when it is breaking away, you see this portion here. This is our Indian subcontinent here and this is equator. So you see the entire landmass was south of equator. From here, the progress starts, the seafloor spreading and you see the movements here. So if you observe 85 million years ago, Right, this is the Cretaceous time period where you see the Indian subcontinent moving towards this side, and here is the Asian landmass. Right, and by the time you come to 65 million years ago, we are almost near the equator, and here you have tertiary lava flows, the Deccan traps. Remember, this geological understanding will help you to understand soils in India and their characteristics, right? So Deccan trap formation, Deccan lava plateau formation, if you observe, is this time period, Cretaceous, and the beginning of tertiary. So we say tertiary lava flow. 55 million years ago, Eocene starts in tertiary, right? And then you observe here, from here, 45 million years ago, Eocene further ahead, and then you see the collision here, by the time we reach 20 million years ago, Miocene. So you observe this Eocene, Miocene, these words here, these are all geological time scales and we observe that how plate tectonics is the responsible theory right so we talk about continental drift theory right then we have seafloor spreading theory right and we have the plate tectonic theory so these are the theories which support this particular argument. And I'm sure if you have looked into the videos, there is something called geosynclinal theory. So geosynclinal theory of Kober and others gives you this idea of the orogeny, the mountain formation. So I'm not discussing these theories here because that's already part of the world geography portion that I have already discussed in geomorphology playlist. So now let's look into the process and observe. So if you observe here, there is a video for you to look into. And this is the simulation video here from Tectonics Observatory. 
in California Institute of Technology they have made it and you see 88 million years ago till present how the progression is there so while we play this video keep a watch on the timeline and the formation which you'll observe at this particular point so here the Gondwana land is now hitting the northern portion which is also sometimes referred to as Angara land or you say the Asian continent so if you observe here this is the simulation for last 88 million years and you see how the Himalayan region is now developing and gradually forming so this will give you this tectonics observatory based simulation will give you an idea how Himalayan region the entire region including Tibetan Plateau got formed right so this is what you need to learn and understand in simple way and this is the diagram I'm sure you have seen these kind of diagrams earlier as well now let's understand it more closely so if you look into the Himalayan region and its evolution and its formation many geologists have studied it right so we'll take name of few geologists as well and we'll look into how they have done the work because this part of geography is the contribution of geologists that we study not the geomorphologists so let's acknowledge this knowledge created by geologists here and this is the geological map of the formation of Himalaya and understanding of it you observe here trans Himalayan magnetic arc then you have Kohistan Ophiolites Indus Sanko suture zone Tithian zone great Himalayan sequence lesser Himalaya all these is mentioned here and color code is given right and what you observe the most common way to study it is north to south right so from the north to the south this sequence has been divided into six subparts so let's understand each subpart and their characteristics so the first one is the trans himalayan region now whenever i say trans himalaya so it's obviously crossing this particular boundary and going to the other side this is what we say is trans himalaya right so trans is crossing over so when you say trans himalaya here where is the word coming from now here is to acknowledge these civil engineers and geologists and people who have worked so you see Alexander Cunningham in his book what was the name of the book Ladakh 1854 there he mentions it for the first time and later on when Hedin popularizes this topic in his book Trans Himalaya in 1909 to 1912 that's where we get this idea of what is Trans Himalaya and how it was formed so if you look into the details of Trans Himalaya let's understand what is it made of so it's made up of granitic and volcanic rocks of course and you observe the time period of this this is 110 to 40 million years ago right so if you observe 110 to 40 it is from Cretaceous to tertiary to Eocene this is the beginning sequence right and it is divided into several areas so one area is called Kohistan you observe here this is Kohistan so this is here where you have Nanga Parbat here and the west of it is called Kohistan then you have Ladakh between Nanga Parbat and Karakoram strike slip fault so if you know faults we have discussed so this is strike slip fault remember so this area is your Ladakh region and then you observe here the Mishmi to the east of Namcha Barua so this is here this side right so you observe the entire sequence this trans Himalayan sequence is explained here so remember this draw your diagrams and do practice this little information that I've given here now come to the next zone it's very famously called Indus Sangpo suture zone what do you mean by suture zone what is this word suture is basically for stitching right stitching your clothes stitches so what are stitches here stitches between the two subcontinents or two land masses right so northern Eurasian landmass and southern Gondwana is being stitched here in this particular zone so it's called a suture zone and the Indus and Sangpo is the name of the river that is Indus and Brahmaputra as we know so this is where we observe this particular suture zone so look at this this is the suture zone here right where the two land masses are stitched and if you observe carefully it was named by whom there is a Swiss geologist to credit here. So look here, his name is Augusto Gnasser. So Augusto Gnasser is a geologist who was born in Italy, Milan, but he worked in Switzerland. So observe here, Geology of Himalaya, 1964 is his work. And here he says that this zone contains volcanic rocks, metamorphic rocks, green schist rocks, if you observe, and it has also deep sea sediments of Tethys Ocean right the earlier ocean sediments you have so a lot of fossils being there so in this part of Himalaya you will see ophiolites as well now what is this ophiolite or flish deposit these black colors that you observe here what is it it's basically the oceanic crust 
and remember this is that particular rock which is having this upper mantle depositions right so this is something that you should remember ophiolite or you know what is the meaning of ophiolite or flesh deposits this is found here now understand the third one what is the third one the third one is Tethian or Tibetan Himalaya and which you will see if you travel across to Lahul Spiti areas or northern Sikkim areas in India or in Ladakh region you will see a lot of places where you have sandstone, shale, limestone right and the most famous one is this Shaligram Shila, the ammonitic fauna, ammonite fossils that you find and it has a lot of importance in the Hinduism if you say, especially the Himalayan Hindus, they worship it in some places for Lord Shiva as Shivlingam and mostly it is worshipped as Lord Vishnu. So it also has a cultural religious significance as well, right? And what you observe in this Tibetan Himalaya, there are a lot of places where it is found. So this Tethian Himalaya, you see Kashmir, Zanskar, Chamba, Spiti, these are some of the places in Northwestern Himalaya, you'll observe it. And it is 100 kilometer in width. So this is the huge zone, you see this blue color here, it is the wide zone, this area. Right, and this is very interesting zone where you see the Tethian deposits as well. Right, and this is credited to which time period? Miocene, if you observe, Miocene age. Right, now come to the fourth particular zone here is the higher or the greater Himalaya. Now, if you observe, this is the greater Himalaya here, right? And greater Himalaya, then you have in the north Zanskar, Ladakh, Karakuram, and here is the Pamir knot, and to the the west of the north is Hindu Kush, right? Here you have to the north is Tian Shan, here is Kunlun and here is Karakoram. So this knot is actually like a position where you have all this centripetalization or you can say there is some kind of radialization here, right? From where you have all the mountains and this is a knot here. So this is something which is interesting here. Now observe this greater Himalaya. So greater Himalaya is a place where you observe 10 to 20 kilometer thick metamorphic rock and the high altitudes up to 8000 meters. So where is this formation coming from? Miocene, right? And if you observe the same geologist Augusto Ganesser talked about this particular, especially the structure of Kumau he studied. Kumau is where? In Uttarakhand, right? So if you observe this area, where you have Nanda Devi and other formations. So Central Himalaya, geological observations of the Swiss expedition 1939. From there we derive this particular knowledge. And if you observe, French geologists working in Nepal also called it as Tibetan slab. Very interesting name. So if they ask you in examination, which of the following is also known by the name Tibetan slab? What is your answer? the greater Himalaya remember that and who said French geologists so basically it is a central crystalline zones so if you observe the geological formation it's crystalline means more metamorphic structures crystalline structures are found in this particular areas now observe the fifth one which is called the lesser or lower Himalaya so this is where you see MCT, the main central thrust here, right? And you observe what kind of metamorphosis has happened, what kind of rocks are there. So sedimentary rocks have metamorphosed. Quarzite, marble, slate, phyllite, schist, gneiss. Look at these. So these are all your rocks which are present here. And if you observe, this is very important where the oldest of the rock system, the earlier rock system has now further metamorphosed. So you'll see some of the oldest rocks here, which is now metamorphosed. And the sedimentary rocks in Lesser Himalaya barely yield fossils. Here you'll not find much of fossils, very little fossil here, right? Most of them is metamorphosed. Now, these are also called outer crystalline zone. So central crystalline, this is outer crystalline. Remember, we are going from north to south. So this is outer crystalline and here the word Klippe. What is this Klippe? Higher Himalaya. The Klippe is a German word basically meaning cliff. So you have a lot of cliffs in this particular zone. Almora Klippe or Kumau is a very famous example. And remember the elevations are roughly 2000 to 3000 meters. And here in Nepal, the lesser Himalayan zone if you observe is the Mahabharata range. Right? So if you observe the Mahabharata range is here right in Nepal and main boundary thrust was first mapped and named in 1864 who was the person Henry B. Medlicott so remember this Medlicott guy he is the person who should be given the credit for this particular name here right now let's look into the sixth zone which is the sub Himalaya or the Shivalik now the Shivaliks have a great role to play in Indian culture, in Indian history, in Indian settlements. So remember geology is linked. Now look at the Shivaliks. 
so long range right so from west to east you see this shivalik range here so if you observe from 250 to 800 meters and it's also called churia range in nepal now observe this particular range it's made up of 10 kilometer thick succession of sandstone and mudstone right so sandstone mudstone all those remember here we call it dunes right here we call it duars right duras duars all these so you'll see conglomerate structures these you know rocks boulders fuse together like this this is what you find here so you observe miocene over the past 24 million years they have evolved they have abundance of fossils of mammals elephants horses who lived in these himalayan foothills here right so if you observe shivalik fossil park in Saketi, that is Himachal Pradesh, houses these fossils and you can go there and look for yourself as well sometimes. Now, here if you observe, Shivalik foothills were surveyed by whom? So he is Captain Proby Kotli. And remember, this is the person from East India Company. See, history and geology and archaeology attached here, right? He was working on Ganga Canal and Doab region of North India. Doab is the area between Ganga and Yamuna. Right, so there he found out, but he did not make it famous. Who made it famous? His colleague Hugh Falconer actually examined these rocks, fossils, and called it Shivalik. Shiva is the name for God, remember? So, here at Haridwar, it is dedicated to Lord Shiva. Right, that's how it gets its name Shivalik. Right, so this is what we need to learn now. Let's understand it in summary in five minutes the summary of uplift. So, there are different phases of uplift. The first phase of Himalayan uplift is called Trans Himalayan uplift, which is the oldest phase 55 to 35 million years ago. Right, so it's the beginning, it's Eocene period if you observe. And here is the rise of two major river. So, if they ask you which of the river is older than Himalaya rising itself, it's in and Brahmaputra. That's why they are also called antecedent stream. The second is Eo Himalayan phase, that is Tethian Himalayan uplift, 45 to 35 million years ago, right? So Eocene, that's why Eo, right? Early Himalayan episode. And if you know this characteristic here, the fact that Trans Himalaya and Tethian Himalaya. Remember this, these names are given. Here you have a lot of antecedent river. When we talk about river, river that cut across the mountains and flow to the other side, this is called antecedent river, right? So this antecedent river example, Indus, Satlaj, Kali Gandhi, Arun, Brahmaputra, these river are cutting across. And it may seem to you that how these rivers are cutting across the huge mountains. They are predating it, right? So when the upliftment was happening, same time the river was cutting across. That is the whole point to make here. And finally, you have the Neo-Tethian, Neo-Himalayan phase. So here you have higher Himalayan uplift, 24 to 17 million. So here it is early Miocene, this time period. And here you will see the Greater Himalaya formation. So remember main central thrust and this is something which is higher Greater Himalaya formation. So higher Himalaya or Greater Himalaya, so early Miocene formation. You have also at the same time, a lot of erosion activity happening. So erosion activity leading to Indus river taking lot of material to this side and Ganga river taking it to this side. So you have two fans as well, submarine Indus fan and here Bengal. So you observe these fans and Sundarbans, if you see these delta formations here is of the same time. So you observe this is here to be looked into. Then the next phase of uplift is the lesser Himalayan uplift, which is late Miocene, where you see Shivalix and this mineral called kyanite which is found here is one of the things to be learned. Now the data indicate a lot of rapid erosion during this time period at the Himalayan region. So you observe a lot of mudstone, siltstone, sandstones fused together, conglomerate. So and also very important here remember we'll be talking about in climatology of India monsoon seasonality. So evidences of monsoon you find where when you have the Shivalik formation because by that time Himalayan region is all uplifted and the winds are being blocked here, right? So moisture laden wind hitting the Himalaya and then rainfall happening. So monsoon evidences you get during this time period that is late Miocene. So M for monsoon, M for Miocene. Remember where the evidences of first kind of monsoons do you get, right? Now, the next is called Neo Tectonics, which is the last and the latest phase of uplift, which is still present. So here there is a debate between two groups of geologists. What is this debate? Understand carefully. Augusto Ganasser and the great geologist K.S. Valdia, they talk about about that the upliftment continues since last 2.5 million years ago, 
द लेटेस्ट अपलिफ्टमेंट द नियो टेक्टोनिक राइट बट देर मेनी स्कॉलर्स हु से दैट ड्यूरिंग मायोसिन हिमालय ऑलरेडी अटेन द मैक्सिमम हाइट and now it's just eroding it doesn't happen so right so what is the evidence the many evidences if you observe so what is happening geochronological evidences there higher himalayan region nanga parbat zanskar gangotri kumbu himal namcha barwa all these areas if you observe is still uplifting mount everest if you observe is still uplifting himalayan region is uplifting and there are many other areas where you see young sediments of the quaternary time period not just the tertiary so here you observe in this time period as well upliftment continues so which is why we say that himalayan region is still uplifting right this testifies the intense neo tectonics in the entire region so this was for the entire formation the process the uplift i hope you had a good time and remember these are the things these are the foundation pillars on which we study the himalayan formation so grab this knowledge make your notes pause the video wherever necessary and don't forget that these informations will be linked to other things you saw so many informations linked here monsoon linked here right soil formation linked here so if you know this base you know that you can build this structure of indian himalaya on the basis of this knowledge so now when we have discussed about the formation of the himalaya in the videos to come we'll be talking about each segment of himalaya like north western himalaya and the other portions of himalaya and we'll look into the different features so stay tuned stay safe keep learning and do share these videos with others take care